We're back. Time for another edition of the Carolina Insider. It is Thursday. That means it's time to grab the wheel. Let's take a drive around social media, find some great Tar Heel topics to discuss. And by the way, I'm Jones. He's Adam. Thanks for being here. Adam, nowhere else to start other than Tar Heel football. Carolina enjoying a 6-1 and one record and an open date right now. Got to 6-1 and one with that really exciting win over Duke this past weekend. And, Adam, this has been a good calendar year uh, for the Tar Heels against the Blue Devils. It's been a good run here in the Carolina-Duke rivalry. Uh, really, across all fronts, Tar Heels hold a winning record across all sports. But, of course, you probably remember that game in New Orleans in April, as do several other folks, two smart people and then that other guy. Uh, as Carolina beat Duke twice at the end of the basketball season and then broke their hearts over at Wallace Wade Stadium on Saturday night, and it, it's been fun to be on this end of it. Just because Carolina won the game, don't think, though, that that means that Cascada wasn't played in Wallace Wade Stadium. Davis Boyle, you may remember Davis from a couple weeks ago. He was at a men's soccer Carolina Duke game in Durham. Reported there from the Cascada playing, and Adam Davis really took it to the, another level on this one. This is my favorite thing of the week. <laughs> Look at the guy over Davis's left shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> he's enjoying it. <laughs> Thank you, Davis. Davis is a treasure. Yes, and as you said on the audio pod, I think Davis may just need to go to every Carolina Duke sporting event in yes. Durham from this point moving forward. Yes, it's required. Um, of course. To the winner goes to spoils, Adam, and that in this rivalry means the victory bell. And the seniors 4-0 against Duke, and they posed uh, for a picture in the locker room after the game uh, celebrating that achievement. And I can tell you I was in that locker room. There were some happy Tar Heels uh, ringing that bell after the game was over. As they should be after a hard-fought game, and then you get to enjoy the fun celebration. No invoices sent after yeah. that celebration at <laughs> Wallace right. Wade. Don't anybody worry. Yeah. No bills need to be paid. Everything's good. Thought this was cool, Adam, from UNC Archives, of course, with the victory bell on the line. couple old pictures of the bell through the years. Love it. Tell you what really concerns me is that picture in the bottom right, I remember and think yeah, that, of as current. Yeah, that doesn't seem that old to that me. That was like a couple Why years ago. Why do those hairstyles look so old? I'm <laughs> confused. That was either a couple of years ago or maybe like 1990, one or the other. Good to see the Bell's been around since 1948. The Tar Heels and the Blue Devils have been playing for that thing. And uh, Carolina holding on to it for the fourth consecutive year. And Carolina did it with, of course, the chrome helmets. Uh, just the fifth time ever that the Tar Heels broke out the chrome helmets. Here was some social media reaction from fine folks like Evan, Captain No Pants, and Holy Cannoli. They finally found my burner, Jones. <laughs> Well, uh, if that was uh, Adam's burner, then maybe we found Adam's homepage as well here on this next one. I don't, I don't even know. What is this, Adam? This, this was a hot topic in the production meeting. I just want to say, if we could have just run the production meeting, <laughs> you would have seen a lot of quizzical looks and uh, where did we find that? But as you can see, highly rated, Jones, and that's what matters. 8,717 votes. In a short amount of time. But 7,300, beautiful. That's a questionable website that uh, Adam brought Five stars to. is five stars. Look, when we tell you to rate the pod five stars, <laughs> we mean rate the pod five stars. Uh, and speaking of the pod, the audio version of the podcast out earlier this week. Adam, we had a great time talking with former Tar Heel head coach Larry Fedora. Great to catch up with Coach Fedora now. Uh, out of coaching, just uh, completely enjoying uh, life away from football, and that included meeting a couple of former Tar Heels for a fun dinner. That was a great interview on Tuesday's show. I encourage you to go back and listen to it, and I would like to have audio of this dinner <laughs> with Jeff Schottmer, Caleb Presley, and, of course, Christy Fedora also there with Coach Fedora, as I bet that that was a fun dinner, gents. Of course, one of the... Real stalwart players, uh, one of the players I think makes you think of the Larry Fedora era in Chapel Hill was Mitch Trubisky, and Mitch now with the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's been a wild year for Mitch. He started, then he was, uh, he was moved to the backup role. Kenny Pickett, former Pittsburgh uh, Panther quarterback, now the quarterback of Steelers, and he got hurt in this game, and here comes Mitch again against the Bucks. and let's take a look as Mitch steps in and uh, finds Chase Claypool for a big touchdown. 
Great to see Mitch have success. Never sad to see Mitch Trubisky have success. All I see is Mitch Trubisky beat Tom Brady, period. The end. <laughs> That's all I need to know. That's the summary of the game. So after the ball game, Mitch was interviewed on the field. Adam, is this actually Mitch Trubisky in this interview? Let's take a listen. I'm not sure. Numbers called, you answer it. Tell me what this feels like to have everybody cheering for you and your team gets the win. Well, Dak, here's the deal. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence, and nobody can hang with my stuff. Uh, you know, I'm just a I'm just a big, hairy American winning machine. If you ain't first, you're last. Okay, maybe not actually, Mitch, but I think what he wanted to say. Sounded like him to me. Um, Mitch, not the only former Tar Heel having success in the NFL this past week. And how about Arthur Smith? I'd classify the Falcons as frisky. They're three and three. They're fe- they're, you don't want to see those guys. You don't know what they're going to do. They're tough. And that includes taking care of the 49ers this past weekend. And uh, good old O-lineman mentality there from Arthur Smith. Just went to a field-level suite, brought his O-line, and enjoyed some beers. They're frisky in that shot for sure. Yeah, that's right. So congratulations, Falcons, now three and three through six games. All right, let's burn through some others here. Uh, we'll start with women's basketball. Great to see Ivory Latta, one of the best all-time players in Carolina women's basketball history. She was at practice this past week, uh, chopping things up with Deja Kelly. Jackson Watkins on the men's side of things. He is a talented basketball player, of course. We know he can hit key free throws when biscuits are on the line. And Adam, a good uh, Apparently a good rhymer as well. Yeah, if you had asked me who out of the 18 Tar Heels on the roster are going to lay down a a new track, I would probably say Jackson Watkins. And you can see here, he's got the first verses all done. Questionable decision by Carolina Volleyball, Adam. What is this? There's so much happening that's not right here. That's not Steve. We know who Steve is, and that's not it. That's not how you spell Ramesses. (laughs) And look at Steve's face in the picture on the left. Is Steve scared or is he no. about to maim someone? No, Steve's ready to take you on. So, Steve, we're keeping our eyes on you, bro. We got it. We got it. I wouldn't go to a volleyball match if I knew that Steve was going to be yeah. there. Now, if the other Steve was going to be there, I'd be there for that. I know what Adam would go to, and that's a field hockey match. And Aaron Matson continues to have a terrific season. And Adam, it's like a, uh, it's like an eclipse. Two potty winners in the same place at one time. Hunter Oakley, who won for best story time this past year, had an Aaron Matson trading card. Aaron signs it. Potty winners forever. That thing's probably worth a billion dollars. It's priceless, honestly. Is it the most valuable card of all time? I would say probably so. There's only one of those, and there's yeah. like 50 or 60 Honus Wagners. Uh, Speaking of potties, if you're an audio pod listener, you know that we needed help this year. Our potty trophy was out of stock. They no longer sold it. To the rescue, Suzanne and Ryan DeWitt, 3D print. Look at this, Adam. 3D printing our new potty. I don't even really understand what all is happening here, but it's awesome. Until the video, did you have any clue that this was actually what happened to create what they brought us? Absolutely not. I knew it wasn't easy, but I think I have even more respect now. There's Suzanne and Ryan finishing up one of those trophies right there. Can't thank them enough. Look at that. There they are. Came to Pod World headquarters to thank you guys. And uh, we are, Puff Johnson has his potty. He does. He has it in hand. He was incredibly excited. All right, we got a couple more things to go. We showed Michael Carter with the waddle celebration last week. Adam got in on the waddling. Rusty Sebastian gives us that side by side. Let's take a look who waddled better. Which one is Michael Carter? <laughs> Two fine athletes waddling around. Good work there. Uh, if you're an audio pod listener, you know I'm going to be a, I use this term very lightly, celebrity guest judge at a food competition this upcoming weekend. Adam, that picture of me, they took it yesterday. Look at that. <laughs> hey there, Miss North Carolina. I'm Jones. <laughs> Hi, sir. Can I take your daughter out on a date tonight? <laughs> I'm in an office that's now been demolished. <laughs> I do think legitimately that picture was 10 years ago or so. Uh, I look exactly the same. Um, one person uh, that we are glad to see back out in action, by the way, not a celebrity guest judge to my knowledge, is Emily Grun, former pod uh, guest. Of course, Emily diagnosed with leukemia a little over a year ago. She's been treated at UNC Lineberger, cancer-free, and back to competing. Great to see her back on the diving board and in the pool. Great to see you back with us. We'll see you next week. (laughs) Yes. Thank you, Davis. Here on the Carolina Insider.